There are many reasons to downsize to a tiny house, but the majority of people who live in tiny homes do not travel with them full time. Today I'm going to show you an exception to the rule. Alexis and Christian from Tiny House Expedition have traveled over 30,000 miles with their tiny house, and they have a project that is fueling the passion of the tiny house movement. I can't wait to show you the inside, so let's go check it out. Take my hand. Take my whole And I'm Christian, and we are Tiny House Expedition. And this is our traveling tiny home. We took this really amazing road trip together when we started dating and we realized that we worked well together and enjoyed traveling and then Christian said, you know, have you heard of Tiny Houses on Wheels? Yeah, and then she went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. so. After several months of deep dive research, I realized that a tiny home really resonated with where I was in my life. I'd been divorced, was a single mom, so I was definitely struggling a bit to take care of everything on my own. I kept learning about all these amazing ways tiny homes were being used, and so I started to get this idea for a story. And as a filmmaker and a person who's like all or nothing, I was like, okay, Christian, I got this great idea. I wanna build a tiny house, and I wanna travel the country to tell the stories of the movement. What do you think? <laughs> That's pretty much just like, okay. Because I'm absolutely happy with a backpack and a camera, so, this was going to be like the luxurious way of doing it with my bed and air conditioning. Kind of upsize for you. <laughs> <laughs> part, part, yeah, parts of it are upsizing a little bit, yeah. From backpack traveling around the, the world to uh, whole house. To, to 130 square feet. <laughs> so for the last two years we've been traveling the United States while we shoot our documentary series. And we've done uh, about 30,000 miles hit about 29 states and met thousands and thousands of people. This is all of our jackets, all of our hats, and all of our shoes. We have 20 pairs of shoes in basically six vertical feet by one foot wide. So 20 pairs of shoes, that is absolutely plenty. Over here, this is actually a ladder that goes up to Garrett's little loft up there. So Garrett is my son. He just turned 11, and he's a part-time resident. This is my bed. Um, we put usually put these on the side right here, then take it out. This is my um, desk that folds down. Up. And this is a pulley. I tie it right here, then I push it out, then it can go up and down. How about when you get a little bit older, do you think you're going to want um, a little more space? or what's... probably going to extend this and then make my bed go that way. Mm -hmm. So when Garrett was in second grade, just after we finished the house, we actually took it to his elementary school for an open house. <laughs> and we had about 28 year olds in the house and it got a yeah, little it was, crazy. It was ten, ten, I think it was like 10 at a time. He went up to his room and showed his room and all they did was scream. So <laughs> I was just like, Okay guys, alright, this is, let, I'm trying to show you some stuff. I didn't know how to handle it. <laughs> so on this side of the house, we have, this is our everything table. It's our dining table, it's our kitchen table, it's our office, um, table. office table. So just flips up like that, leg kicks out. We designed it after the um, Ikea table that is in most people's tiny houses that has the drawers and stuff. Being filmmakers, we have a lot of hard drives. Yeah. Um, and they're all inside this um, table right here. That It's actually got three drawers that go all the way across. And I decided to put power in here. So all I have to do is plug my hard drive in. One cord of, I think there's eight hard drives in there. One cord to my computer. And all eight, eight drives will kick on. And then over here is our sofa. 
And down here, there's actually a little bit of storage. So there's storage underneath and storage in those two guys right there. So there's kind of a two-part system that's going on here. The, this is the bathroom door. So when I close the bathroom door, it actually opens up a little pantry right here. Mm. So, and if you can see this, there's two different colors of wood right here. There's blue and green. These actually came from a house that uh, we got to pull apart in North Carolina. We actually used all of that on the interior walls right here, but we painted all this white. It was a little bit too beachy for the two of us because it was like striped blue and green. But over on this same side is our closet. It opens up that way. It's a little hidden, which is awesome. But I like to tell people this is 30 of my t-shirts. So I actually have a month's worth of clothes inside this closet and so does Alexis. The kitchen counter is one of those things that I had a real hard time doing, but it, because of that it was a lot of fun. So this is all handmade and it's actually from wood that came from trees that fell in a tornado behind my parents' house in North Carolina. And we use that for our live edge stuff like the shelf and the ladder, but it's also all of the two by fours in the whole house all came from trees that fell in a tornado, which was just an odd thing. One thing I had to do was cut a hole for the sink. When I did that, I decided to keep the piece so I could actually put it across here and have a little bit more counter space. I knew I wanted to put my plates in like a drying rack, but I could never find the right one that was like narrow. So I was walking through a, a home goods store and found this, uh, this thing that's actually made for grilling sausages on a barbecue. And I was like, I think it'll fit. So this piece of metal right here is actually that for doing the sausages. And also that's the handle for it. <laughs> it takes her about 20 minutes to tidy up the inside to get ready to go. And then it takes me about 20 minutes to do the same outside, and hook up the truck and to the house and all that stuff. So it's not really that big a deal. We got a little 20 inch stove. People are always like, where did you, where did you get that? Got from Brooklyn. So, you know, so you can, get, you can get them anywhere, but it's a nice little Bambi stove. We got some storage under here, which um, all this actually comes out. Um, these are all little drawers that are Ikea drawers that I found when I was living in Brooklyn. Uh, somebody's thrown them out in the trash and I just kept them. And then this is our, our fridge and we actually got this at Habitat. So Habitat was one of our sponsors. So we were able to get this for free, but I think it was like 75 bucks. So this is our bathroom. We definitely prioritize this space. Uh, we're, we're tall people again, and I have a lot of hair. So we wanted to make sure that we made a shower that was big enough so I could really do some great lathering. So we have a 34 by 36 shower. It's also where we store our dirty clothes. The walls are from recycled metal sheet. This worked out really well and gives a little bit more interest than, you know, a white surround. So over here we have a vanity that's over the toilet, which is always a funny thing to say. But my favorite thing is this shelf that folds down and rests on the windowsill. And I do my makeup here and it just works perfectly. And in fact, it's more counter space than I think I've ever had in a bathroom. And we also have a, a nature side composting toilet. We began with a self-made composting toilet and then later upgraded to this, and which was a really good move because it reduced our maintenance greatly. Our house has a lot of stories, but one of the most interesting things here is actually how you get upstairs. So this whole contraption here is actually our staircase, believe it or not. <laughs> so this is does three things. It's it's um, a container for holding clothes. It's a seat for this table that actually sits right here. And this is also a step. And this second step right here pulls out. This has been the biggest space saver in our house. Um, so you can actually get up the stairs. Let me just demonstrate. So super simple. I sat here for three days screwing stuff to the wall trying to figure it out and it, it, it took me three four days to be like that's what I'm doing. Christian gets up before me typically I'm coming downstairs and I, I go to take a step and it's not there. Yeah uh, and it's because I'm like I've just been sitting at the table or something like that so um, so I'll push it in but I'll sometimes I just forget to pull it out and if she's upstairs she's 
Mayday, not com mayday. Not completely <laughs> trapped, but uh, kind of trapped. So yeah. it's more convenient when it's out. What you need is like a push button, you know, yeah, and it that, just like yeah. Yeah. comes out like that. Oh, that's just, oh a smart that, tiny house. That's, yeah. that's just something to break. Too high tech, yeah. Too high tech for the tower. So this is our loft. We have a queen size bed. It's a nine inch tall mattress. So it's quite tall for a tiny house, but totally worth it. We also have four awning windows, which is great for that cross breeze. And we made some really cool lights. We made these out of plumbing pipe, which we later spray painted and then added Edison bulbs. When we hit the road two years ago, uh, Christian's dad, John, got into painting. So we sent him a picture of our house parked at Squaw Valley near Lake Tahoe and he made us this lovely painting. It's really sweet and it also features the porch swing that he made for us. So we're living together in a tiny house, 130 square foot tiny house, and we work together. This is about how far we are apart <laughs> um, most days all day long. We do have conflict, of course, uh, you know, whether it's on the personal side or on the film side, but we talk about whatever it is and work it out and usually it's, it comes out to a better place. So, you know, being able to do that on the work side of things and on the personal side of things is, is a great thing. What are these hearts on the wall? This was a gift Christian gave me when we were dating and uh, never put them up in my old house. It didn't feel right, but uh, felt perfect in the tiny house. We need to have more inclusive communities to welcome neighbors from all backgrounds and from all housing types because this is how we can create healthier, happier, and more diverse communities that provide housing for all our neighbors. There are many reasons to downsize to a tiny house. Alexis and Christian are a mobile tiny house but I have plenty of other stories on this channel, so make sure to subscribe for the newest videos. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Oh,